President Trump taking action on coronavirus relief, bypassing Congress after negotiations failed. Moments from now, we'll hear directly from the president. He's blaming the Democrats for not acting, and he's holding a news conference where he's sure to talk about his decision to sign executive actions aimed at providing economic relief to millions of Americans. Here's the president. They were asking for things that just had nothing to do with what we're talking about. And we've been going through this routine for a long time, number of weeks, and it was time to act. And actually, we've been largely praised. We have to get money out to the people. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi blasting Trump's executive actions as, quote, absurdly unconstitutional and threatening a legal challenge. But the speaker also faced a grilling from the press over her role in the failed negotiations. Watch. Having no bill at all, not coming to any agreement wasn't going to provide any of the things that you want either. You're known as a mass, master negotiator, but didn't you mess this one up? Clearly, you don't have an understanding of what is happening here. Do you take any and responsibility, is, Madam Speaker, the fact for the is fact that others... this is stuck? I understand you, 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 know, you want to get the best possible for people, but at some point, you got to work with the other side, right? All right, Dagan McDowell, I wanted to start with you just to set the stage for how important was it for people who were going to run out of the um, extra supplemental benefit, how important is it for them to have this money? And what, tell me about those negotiations, because I don't think people are going to care where the check comes from as long as they get their check. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'll just start with, and from personal experience, when you have to bust out the finger, you're losing. Just a, a note to Nancy <laughs> Pelosi. Uh, the president really found, I, I don't like executive orders, didn't like them under President Obama, don't love them now, but the president really found a sweet spot for what the economy and Americans need right now. They do need extra money. People who can't go back to work need extra money in unemployment benefits. The $600 went away. Many argued that was too de generous. It was an incentive for people to stay at home. They were getting more on unemployment than they would be back on mm -hmm. the job, but $400 is a reasonable amount. It's higher than the Republicans proposed. There's that. And then also, there's a benefit to people who are at work, who's been hustling through the pandemic shutdown, uh, risking their health, and also an incentive for people to go back to work through the payroll tax deferral. He's got, mm -hmm. the president has the Democrats in a vice grip. Either they've got to give in to some of the Republicans' mm -hmm. demands on what they want, or they're going to fight the president on giving people money, who, people who need that money. I've been a financial journalist for about a quarter of a century, and in technical terms, what we witnessed over the weekend were some folks getting their asses handed to them. Mm. <laughs> I like that technical term, indeed. Greg, this kind of reminded me of the Schumer shutdown. Do you remember when the President Trump was able to label the shutdown as the Schumer shutdown and then basically pin it on the Democrats, and they had to cave? Um, and there's another Democrat from our past who thinks that the president was just pulling a stunt. Take a look. It's a stunt. Um, there's no doubt about it. But it's also meant to be a big diversion from the hard work the Congress should be engaged in to provide the kind of relief uh, that tens of millions of Americans need. Well, Greg, that's one way to put it. How would you put it? I don't know, Dana. First, we have Dagan swearing, and then you think that's funny, and then you have to run that while people are having dinner. <laughs> I mean, really, this is disgusting. Okay, but politics is a magic show for the corrupt, right? Mm -hmm. Pelosi says, hey, but we had a bill and you did nothing. Yeah, but that COVID relief bill was weighed with so much pork, you could roast it on a spit. There, that was their trick, their magic trick, tack on climate, student debt forgiveness. And then if you don't agree, oh, you want people to die, even though it's you who you know snuck in that extra relief for uh, free eyeglasses for woodland tree nymphs. Um, so <laughs> what we've learned is we need we need a new streamlining system for real emergencies and not phony emergencies. Because Congress Congress can handle fake emergencies, but the real ones where you need money fast, you got to let the president handle that and then punish those 
who attach like BS pork with like a public spanking. I wouldn't go as far as an actual execution, but I would say a public spanking. So if you say, you know, I know this is a relief bill for an earthquake, but what about the new breeding uh, site for, I don't know, uh, uh, snail, snail darters, then you have to be publicly spanked. Because this is the problem. The pandemic taught us that you cannot depend on Congress in times of emergency. We can depend on them during a benign period. We can, they can do their stupid speeches and fly to climate summits. No one really cares because mm -hmm. that's a burden we can handle. But right now, in a time of destruction and disease and disorder, we can no longer indulge their pointless activities. So I say executive action all the way and then sort it all out later. Donna, it does seem kind of hard to imagine that the Democrats would sue to stop the president's executive actions when they don't have an alternative to get money into people's hands as quickly as people might need it. What do you think? Well, here's what I think. On May 15th, as you well know, the Democrats passed the HEROES Act. And while we can quibble about the amount, $2 trillion, $3 trillion, we can say it was pork or beef or even chicken. But what it did contain was a comprehensive way of looking at the crisis. At that time, Mitch McConnell and the Republicans decided to drag their feet and say, well, let's put it on pause before we spend more money. The Democrats understood that July 31st was going to come sooner rather than later. The Republicans came to the table on July 27th. So let's stop trying to figure out how to blame someone for sticking up a finger when the truth is millions of Americans are about to be evicted. Millions of Americans cannot make ends meet. And yes, the president has signed a piece of paper. He got money from the Social Security. He got money from FEMA to make this happen. Whether they decide to sue or not sue, Congress should get back to work, figure out what the final tab yeah. should look like, and help the American people. I think everyone could agree with that, Lawrence, that now. I think one of the things that the president's action did is force people then back mm -hmm. to the, and get and to get serious. One of the things the Wall Street Journal said is that when the Democrats were asking for three plus trillion dollars, that it wasn't so much as a negotiation as mm -hmm. a stick up. Mm -hmm. And that's not really the way that you come to a compromise. But now, with the president having taken this yeah. action, could a compromise be possible? Um, excellent analysis as usual. Yes, uh, we're, at a <laughs> we're at a negotiation table now because the game is much different. You know, my basketball coach used to always say, basketball is a game of runs. The score can change in the blink of an eye. Politics shouldn't be that way, but it is. Um, the Democrats didn't want to negotiate as long as it was the Republicans that were going to take the blame. Uh, they kind of painted this picture that the, the Republicans didn't care, and it was over $3.4 to $1.5 They weren't being taken seriously. Well, the president played the same game of politics by saying, you know what, I'll do this executive order, and you can take me to court, but now you look like the bad guy, because what did you pass? Because I'm already doing right. this. What are you going to do? So now you see Democrats wanting to be reasonable, and I'll say this, Nancy Pelosi, she did take take an L. And she has to take the L on this and then get back to the mm -hmm. negotiation table. Because right now, what she promised to her constituents was the post office funding, the hospitals, the state mm -hmm. board of the election. And right now, she's going to get zero of that. And so now she has to get to that table to mm -hmm. get some type of win. But again, this is a game of runs. Right now, they cannot paint it that the Republicans are the bad guy. I do not like executive <laughs> orders, but, you know, the president got a uh, win right Lawrence. now. I have to tell you, I thought basketball was a game of baskets and that <laughs> baseball was a game of runs. No, no. But I could be wrong. You I'm run probably down the court. wrong. People will tell me on Twitter. All right. All right.